Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So today <laughs> we have a art haul, but specifically an art haul from my recent trip to the United States. I've went to New York for a um, for something else <laughs> and whilst I was there I couldn't help but stop into um, a couple of places to pick up some art supplies. So the majority of these supplies, like all the pens and Tombow pens and the paints I picked up from Blix and then the palette and brushes I got from Daiso. So um, for those of you who don't know and a lot of you probably don't on this channel but I used to live in Dubai and when we lived in Dubai uh, Daiso was a shop that we had over there. It's a Japanese, it's like a Japanese dollar store I guess or pound shop um, and there were a few of those in Dubai and I loved going there and I loved like just browsing the aisles and things like that. And um, so I didn't realize until just recently that there was a Daiso in New York. So when I was there, I was like, I have to pop in because it's been so long and I kind of miss going to Daiso. So while I was there, I, I found some brushes and this palette. I'd heard about this palette specifically from Daiso before on other channels. So I got one to try it out. I think everything I got, the brushes and the palette, they were all like each set was um, like $1.99. So fairly inexpensive. So yeah obviously I don't think Daiso had any paints or at least none that I was interested in so it's just a cheap plastic palette um but I thought it would be good for like travel and stuff oh okay I didn't realize there was wells on both sides there so that's interesting um but yeah so there's 15 and then five so actually there's quite a lot of space for paint in this palette and you've got your different mixing areas as well and then there's obviously there's this is going to be like a thumb holder so you put your thumb through and this is where you can put some brushes to like I mean I think my brush is too small <laughs> to fit but for like larger belly larger brushes could fit in there as well I'm not sure what these are for but I guess you could use that for whatever you wanted anyway just nice standard it feels like a fairly sturdy plastic it's not super flimsy or anything so I wouldn't be worried about it like breaking as such but um I think it'd be good as like a travel palette if you wanted to take some paints you squeeze out yourself and create your own palette to take with you so that's the palette and then like I said I got some brushes as well actually I'm going to use one of these brushes I think for swatching so I ended up getting two of the same brush um it's all written in Japanese so unfortunately I can't tell you what anything says I will hold it up though so in case you do read Japanese you can tell me or you can figure out what it says there you go so I'm not sure what that says but it's got nice tip on that brush so I thought I would probably quite like this one so I got two all right then just for fun just because I thought I couldn't help myself I had to see what this was going to be like this is one of those giant calligraphy brushes and it actually says calligraphy brush on the packet there you go it's just like a giant brush the brush head part of it is like I don't know like two inches maybe in length maybe not quite two inches but it's long it's like two knuckles of my finger and um, that's the info on there it's a calligraphy brush don't know what size or anything like that and then the last set I got was this comic brush set is what they call it so it's a flat brush and then two smaller rounds and I think it's this this middle one and maybe the flat brush that I'll use for some swatching in a little bit so that's everything I got from Daiso. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. That's how I've always heard it pronounced, Daiso. I don't know if it's meant to be Daiso. There we go, the brushes without the caps on, out of the plastic. They still have like the glue or whatever it is on it, so I'll have to wash that off before we get to swatching, which is fine. Um, and then as for paints, I, I picked up paints from three brands. Let me zoom you guys in so you can see a bit better. Okay. There we go. That's probably better. So I've got paints from Core because Core is very expensive in the UK. So I wanted to try a few of their colours. Um, so I got their Titan Buff, which is a colour I really like, and I was interested to see what their version would be like. Um, Quinacridone Gold. 
I've had this colour from Core before as part of the High Chroma set and I really liked it. And I picked up this one because PO48 is one of the pigments that is being discontinued. So I wanted to have a tube of Core's Quinacridone Gold. So this is PO48 and PY150. And then along the same lines, I picked up a tube of their Quinacridone Burnt Orange. Now Quinacridone Burnt Orange in most brands is that PO48 pigment, but with Core, it's actually PR206. So um, this is commonly known as Brown Madder, Quinacridone Maroon. Um, I think Daniel Smith call it, um, uh, oh, Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet, I think is what they call it. Um, so it goes by a few different names, but it's that PR206 pigment that's being discontinued. So I wanted to get a tube of that one. Then from Da Vinci, I got Green Gold. I'm not actually sure why I picked up green gold because I've got a lot of this sort of pigment, but I picked it up anyway. And then I also picked up their indigo, which I was really interested in because it doesn't have any black. Typically, a traditional, like original indigo pigment is fugitive. It's a plant-based dye uh, or a plant-based color pigment. So it's, it's traditionally quite fugitive. So most brands offer hue versions, which are just other pigments mixed together to create the same sort of color but most brands have black mixed in with their indigos. Nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of indigo colors by other brands that I love, but I was really intrigued because Da Vinci's indigo is only made with PV27 and PV19. So that's Prussian blue, which I know has its own questionable light fastness issues um, and quinacridone violet. So I thought that'd be interesting to see what that would be like. And then finally from Daniel Smith, I picked up three tubes. I picked up Cerulean Blue Chromium. I have a small, I have a half pan of this and I really liked it. So I wanted to get the tube and it's my favorite sort of shade of Cerulean, it's PB36. And then again, on the, in the vein of the whole colors going out of stock or being discontinued, I picked up a tube of Quinacridone Gold and Sap Green. Both of these have that PO48 pigment in them. So the Quinacridone Gold has PO48 and PY150. Sap Green has the same pigments plus PG7. So I actually already have a tube of each of these in my collection. They're partially used, but I wanted to get a couple more while I was in the States where it's cheaper just to um, have them for when they eventually run out and they're not, those pigments are, are therefore replaced at some point, but we will swatch everything out today in a minute. Um, I thought I'd quickly run through the Tombow pens I picked up and the um, pencils as well. So I got, num I don't know what the colour names are for these Tombow pens, I just know the numbers based on what's on the barrel. So I've got number 757, 772, 803, 98, 528, 379, 373, and 291. So one thing I did for this trip before I left, and I'll show you really quickly, I have this small little A6 size sketchbook from Jackson's. I went through and I swatched out all of my Tombows that I already have. I swatched out all my different color pencils that I have and things like that, just so that when I got there and I was looking around the shop I could check you know if I was picking up a color pencil I could check if I had something similar when I swatched it to something I already got so I don't duplicate the colors um I so here you can see some of my swatching those are the Tombows this was some of the color pencils so I'd scribble them out on this paper and then I could hold them up against my swatches to see um which ones were similar to ones I already had so that was really helpful so I didn't really pick up anything that was like something I already had. So I'd highly recommend that if you're going to an art shop specifically to get something, is to have like a little swatch book specifically for like color pencils and pens. All right, so for Prismacolor, I picked up the Proce Process Red, um, Mulberry, uh, Dark Purple, I'll give you the color numbers. Uh, Process Red is 994, Mulberry is 995, Dark Purple is 931, and I've got Muted Turquoise, which is 1088. Peacock Green is 907. 
chartreuse is 989 then we have canary yellow which is 916 and ginger root which is 1084 Finally, I got Scarlet Lake, which is 923. And then I also, funnily enough, the Derwent Lightfast pencils, even though they're a British brand, were cheaper in the US at the moment because they were on sale at Blix. So from Derwent Lightfast, I picked up Heather. These don't have colour numbers on them, so I'll just read out the names. I got Heather, got uh, Nightshade, uh, Denim. Dark Turquoise, Seaweed, Ivy, Dark Honey, Amber Gold, then I also picked up Oyster and Magenta. So these were all the colours that I got. Now I will set up and get to swatching them and then I'll, sit, I'll do the swatching set to music and then we'll come back and chat at the end once it's all done.
back now, swatches have dried, so I thought we'd run through really quickly and take a look at everything. So here we have the core colours, Titan Buff, Quin Gold and Quin Burnt Orange. Um, really lovely colours, I quite like their Titanium Buff or Titan Buff as they call it, so um, that's a nice one, I'm glad I got that and really like their versions of both of these colours. Then we have the Daniel Smith colours, Quin Gold, Sap Green, Chromium, Cerulean Blue, Chromium. Again, all lovely. This is probably my very favourite version of Sap Green. Then we have the Da Vinci Green Gold and Indigo, and I really like this Indigo. It's really, it's got a lovely sort of tone to it without being dulled down by that black. I find some Indigos that have black in them can be quite dull. Some are fine, some are great. Um, like the Windsor & Newton Indigo I really like, but this one's really pretty as well. And then since I had a bit of space, I did some mixes between Green Gold and the Indigo. Um, and like, I really like this one here. I like the range you can get. Get a really nice sort of natural range of greens. None of them look too garish. Every, all of them look like shades you would see in real life rather than, you know, some really sort of garish ones. So I think they make really nice green mixes. And then on this page here, I just tested out the brushes really quickly. So I tested out some of the brushes anyway. So this first one here is the small brush in the comic set. Then I did the round brush from the comic set, the larger one, which worked really well. Uh, any sort of like rough edges on the edge of these strokes is not to do with the brushes, actually the paper is quite rough. Um, and then we have the flat stroke or the, the sort of the flat brush. Sorry if you can hear any noises in the background, that's my husband uh, trying to get the baby ready for a nap. <laughs> um, it's a flat brush here and these like the vertical lines you can make with it and then finally this is the one that i bought two of this brush it's really long and thin bristles uh, i mean yeah the the brush itself is quite thin so um so yeah that's created these sorts of marks and really nice sharp straight lines um and some subtle sort of line variation when you push down onto the belly of the brush as well so just wanted to show you those that i did i didn't film this part but just so you can see the results and then finally we have the more dry media, the markers and the pencils. Um, so here we have all the Tombow colours um, and their swatches. I'll hold it up here if you want to pause and sort of take a look at the colours and the names. And then we have the Prisma colours and then the Derwent Light Fast. I definitely went for a, a more muted palette with the Derwent Light Fast pencils compared to the Prisma colours. I went for brighter colours. It's just funny how that worked out. And the Tombows ended up being a bit of a combo of the two. With the Tombows, I was looking to fill in a few gaps in my collection. And also, I really like the palette of colours that they have in the Tropical set. Um, I already had some of those colours. And I didn't want to purchase the set just to get duplicates. So I picked up some of the others that I was missing. And even, you know, made a couple of changes. Because some of the ones I already had were very similar to... The colours that were in that set so I just rather than buying the ones from the set I just substituted the colours I had so this is my version of the Tombow Tropicals palette I'm not so sure about this one uh, this one I've added the ones with the asterisk are the ones where I've made a change so one of the colours in the set I could not find it in the shop and I didn't have it so I've replaced it with a yellow because I felt this palette needed a light yellow um, this one's a slight change from the one in the pa in the set. This one and this one were very close to the colours from the set, so I didn't want to buy them again, like a diff slightly different shade. Um, but yeah, so I quite like this palette. I might take that purple out, I'm not sure. But we'll see, I think I might prefer it without it. I think that's just a bit off the colour. I might replace it with a darker green, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, anyway. That's that, I thought I'd show you that. And this is being swatched on De La Rowney Smooth Heavyweight Paper. Um, and this book, sketchbook that I'm using here, is by, <laughs> I promise you the baby's fine. My husband's with her. Uh, she sometimes protests going down for a nap, but she loves sleeping, so I don't know what she's complaining about. Anyway, the sketchbook is by Indigo, my like Artway Indigo. It's a hat, they say it's handmade paper. It's really quite rough. It's got these pretty deckled edges. 
I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it for watercolours. It gives a really um, quite a speckled sort of effect. I tend to just use it for swatching and colour mixing and stuff like that because I don't really like painting in it, which is really annoying because I did... It was very affordable, this um, this sketchbook. Let me see if I can find a good example. It's hard to show. It's like It's hard to get clean lines. Um, you get lots of this sort of speckling so you have to do like several layers and stuff like that so I don't know I wasn't hugely fond of painting in this book so I'm just trying to use it up at this point um, playing around with colour mixes I might go over these and doodle on top of them like backgrounds and stuff anyway so that's the sketchbook it's like the landscape version if I remember I will try and link it below and if I forget please remind me and I can find you a link for it um, it's very affordable sketch for the size of sketchbook that it is being I mean just check the measurements it is 11 and a quarter by seven and three quarter inches so what's that uh what's that in centimeters that is 29 centimeters by 17 and a half roughly so it's a decent size sketchbook um but it's just not really for me anyway that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.